Hey, this is Anthony Davis with Shapeshift Wellness, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about anatomical variation because anatomy, well, like Captain Barbosa might say, they're more like guidelines than actual rules. So let's check it out. Hey, real quick, make sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and share this with your anatomy loving friends. Also, be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I will give you a quick and simple test that you can do um, to see if something really matters and if you actually need to correct somebody's alignment if you're uh, you know, teaching yoga or fitness or anything like that. All right, let's get to the video. Anatomy really is just guidelines. We learn it in a textbook and we even learn specific angles that specific bones have, like the angle between the, the shaft of the femur and the neck of the femur and the angle that it plugs into the hip joint or, you know, all these different angles that we learn, the Q angle, um, that, yeah, that's an average. And yeah, most people are going to have somewhat similar morphology. Morphology just means the shapes of the bones, essentially. So, however, it's important to leave room for nuance because the fact is that even though a lot of people are going to have very similar shaped bones, the fact is that there are a lot of people that don't, and they have very, very different shaped bones, which means if you are a yoga teacher or personal trainer or strength and conditioning coach or whatever, if you're a movement teacher and you're teaching based on the anatomy and you're saying, well, your feet have to point this direction, your knees have to be stacked in this location, your hips have to be facing this direction, maybe for some people it might be beneficial, but definitely for some people, it's not going to be beneficial and you're going to have to make compromises. So I'm going to give you some quick examples. First, variations in the acromial shape. So the acromion process is the uh, little bone here on your shoulder and uh, it's the part of your scapula. And there's something called a subacromial space that, you know, a lot of people talk about. So it's this space underneath uh, the a chromium process, and that's that space that's between the acromion and your um, the humeral head. So in there, there's a bunch of squishy stuff. There's you know some muscle, a bursa, some other stuff, and it, it gets squished. And lots of things get squished, so it's not necessarily a big deal. But some people are more squish intolerant. <laughs> they don't like to be squished, uh, and when you squish the squishy stuff. <laughs> It doesn't feel good for them. So it's maybe important to realize that some people's bones are just shaped differently. And so maybe activities that are really going to compress that area are going to be less helpful for that kind of person. Um, and you wouldn't expect that a person with, here, let me um, do, 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 do. All right. So you wouldn't expect a person here who's got a bone that goes over and then literally hooks down into that space to be able to have the same type of overhead shoulder range of motion as this person with, um, well, without a hook into their acromial space. So you wouldn't expect them to move the same. And so you wouldn't correct, correct their alignment in the same fashion either. If you were teaching movement, this is a common variation. The femoral torsion angle um, essentially is related to whether or not you'll have femoral antiversion or retroversion. So here's your antiversion, here's your retroversion. So basically what that means is that the femur itself, as you grew, twisted. So the ball in the socket stayed in one area, but then the actual bone, the long bone of your femur, that's your thigh bone, just literally started to twist a little bit as you grew up and it stayed like that. And that's totally normal. It's fine. Um, there's a typical angle, which is shown, you know, here in the center. And that's what we're basing all of our cues on. We're basing all of our, well, your feet should point this direction and your knees should point this direction and blah, blah, blah to quote unquote, create space in the hip joint. Well, yeah, for most people, probably that's true. But if you have, for example, um, you know, antiversion, here is uh, your antiversion right here. And what that means is that if your toes remain pointing straight forward, then what's going to happen is that 
compared to the typical angle of the of the femur here, then your uh, femur is going to be facing more forward. Fine. What if it's retroverted? Well, in retroversion, if the feet point stay uh, pointing straight forward, then the femoral head is pointing more more backwards than um, your typical person, which also means that for that person, that relative to their foot position, that if their knees are going closer together, then there might be less space here in the inside of their hip. So they might find like a utkatasana, for example, a chair pose in yoga with a classical chair pose where your knees are touching. They might find that kind of uncomfortable, right? Um, and if the the compromise here is that if you have somebody who like if, if we say, OK, um, I want the first example here is if I want the foot to stay facing the same direction, then your hip joint is doing different things. And you might not want that for that person. You might not want their hip to be doing certain things. So in that case, you have to compromise the foot position and say like, all right, I don't care about the foot position. And so then th then here uh, below um, is if we say, okay, foot position can do whatever we want. All I care about is the hip position. So here you, you said, all right, I just want the hip to face the same exact direction. That's all I care about. But that means that now, like the person on the right here who has a retroversion of the femur, now because their hip is quote unquote in alignment um, or it's in like a neutral position, then their toes are gonna point really far out and that's gonna look silly to you. You're gonna look at that person and be like, why are your toes pointing out? And you're gonna try and correct them and you're gonna try to bring the toes in because that's what we like to do. But now their hip joint is pointing more backwards. It might not even matter, honestly. It might not even matter for that person. But but you might, um, the point is if you're trying to think biomechanically, then I'm just trying to let you know what's actually happening biomechanically. For some people, if you correct their foot position, because oh no, their foot is turning out. Well, you correct their foot position and then now you've created um, you know, a, a new hip position that you might not like because it's not neutral. Um, the same here is it, you might see somebody's pigeon toed. So their, their foot is pointing inwards. Their toes are pointing inwards. And you're like, ah, let those toes point a little bit out. Well, now you're taking the femoral head and saying, well, now this thing is going to point more forward. And that might be a problem, right? Uh, an extreme example would be that if you over, if you really overcorrected somebody, like an older person who maybe recently had a, a hip dislocation, and uh, and you correct their toes and you say, oh well, you gotta turn them out, and then you turn it and let's say they had femoral antiversion. Now the head is pointing more forward, and it might be more likely to dislocate if you're doing some intense exercise. So that's an extreme example, but it, it proves the point. Um, most of the time, little corrections like this aren't really going to make a big difference, but I want you to see that the bones are literally shaped different. And another example is nerves. And so here's your sciatic nerve and your piriformis. So that muscle right there is the piriformis and the, the yellow thing is the nerve. And, uh, you know, most people, the sciatic nerve comes out and it's not touching. Well, it's not um, entrapped basically by the piriformis muscle. It comes out in between a few muscles, but it has plenty of room to slide and glide and move and all that stuff in between the muscles. However, some people, their sciatic nerve literally comes out in between. It like punctures the piriformis muscle. That sucks because that means every single time you contract that muscle, it's squeezing your your um, your sciatic nerve. So every time you squeeze the piriformis for this type two person or the type four person or the type uh, or five or four or yeah, um, for any of those people, every time you squeeze the piriformis, it's lit, it's just squeezing the crap out of the sciatic nerve, uh, and that's just. That's just going to suck. You know, it's not going to feel good. So, you know, there's things you can do to get that muscle to chill out a little bit and um, and move it and, and, and all that. But the point is that for some people, there's nothing you can do really to change your, your the shape of your anatomy. So we learn the textbook anatomy and we think that everybody's anatomy is like this. But it's not. There's a bunch of other things that can happen because growth and human development is weird. And we uh, <laughs> we grow from a, 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 an egg 
that divides into a bunch of like a blob of all these blobby cells that kind of form distinct other blobs. And then those blobs become more distinct until you have like a blob full of blobs. <laughs> and then what? Uh, eventually they become like, you know, oh, that kind of starts to look like a spine and a nervous system and, you know, a heart and stuff like that. Um, but if the process is kind of weird and the blobs kind of form inside of other blobs, <laughs> then you've got, you know, all these different variations and that's normal. And it's not a big deal. Some variations obviously are a big deal, but um, most variations are not a big deal. So variation is normal. Uh, now here's the tip for your anatomy. So if you're trying to cue something and you're like, oh, I really want to correct this person's foot position, but now I just watched this video that said if I correct their foot position, they're going to have a dislocation. First of all, that's not what I said. <laughs> I was using an extreme example. It's hyperbole. Um, so get that right. Secondly, uh, if you feel the need to correct somebody's foot position, that's it's okay. Uh, you try it. You can try it. And you can just go to that person and say, hey, how does your hip joint feel right now? Um, and if they're like, uh, I don't know, it feels great. Well, maybe you don't need to do anything. However, if they're like, well... Eh, I don't know, it's whatever, or, or oh, no, I, I don't know, it's a little uncomfortable, or it's tight, or whatever. Okay, well, hey, what, is, what would it feel like if you put your feet in this position instead? Oh, you know, it's, uh, well, it feels a little better. Great, cool, then you, what, whatever you did helped them. But if you say, oh, what, if, what would it feel like if you put your feet in this position? And they say, ooh, I, I don't like that. The, great. Then say, okay, well, go back to what you were doing. Never mind me. Do, 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 and leave them alone. Right? So it's pretty simple. Just ask for feedback. Don't correct people and assume that you know everything about their body because you don't. And even if you really understand biomechanics, then you would understand that people have different shaped bones, different shaped muscles, nerves that can go through muscles, all kinds of weird stuff that makes your textbook anatomy generally applicable for a lot of people, but not applicable for everybody. So you need to ask for feedback. Cool. All right. Well, that's it for today's video. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to my channel. Um, again, share this with your friends because that helps, you know, educate people and create better yoga teachers, better movement teachers. Um, and it helps me out too. So that's nice. And I will see you in the next video.